Welcome to Westminster Presbyterian Church. I'm Donald Meisel, minister with my colleagues to and with this downtown Minneapolis congregation. In this second year of sponsoring these noontime forums, town hall forums, our overarching theme remains the same, voices of conscience, key issues in ethical perspective. Now, over the past eight forums, and this is our ninth, we have brought individuals of known competence and conscience to address the issues resident in such diverse areas as music, government, women's issues, the Middle East, medicine, the moral majority, corporate life, the arms race. Now, ultimately, all these issues, I think you will agree, are extensions of the condition of the human spirit, the individual human psyche. And so finally today, we have someone with us of known competence and moral perspective to talk about the most important of all frontiers, the inner frontier. Dr. Rollo May, widely respected psychoanalyst, is perhaps best known for his writings, including such books as The Meaning of Anxiety, Love and Will, The Courage to Create, and then just published in the last few weeks, Freedom and Destiny. And his theme today, appropriately, is the crisis of freedom. Dr. May, we did not order this weather but the climate for your reception here today just couldn't be better. We welcome you. Dr. Meisel and friends, I think you all ought to have a prize for coming out to a meeting on a day like this. Um, but I hope that uh, our topic this morning, which to me is fascinating, uh, will be of sufficient interest to you so that that will uh, do as your prize. Human freedom uh, is a tremendously uh, significant aspect it's what makes us human beings compared to the rest of, of nature. Every organ, other organ, or aspect of our nature that we have uh, has its own being, its own function, identical with its nature. That is, the eyes are made to see, and they see. The heart is made to pump uh, blood. Uh, if we take values like beauty, we know what uh, we mean when we say something is beautiful. But freedom is the great exception because the nature of freedom is to change itself. The nature of freedom is that we cannot predict uh, what, uh, how it is going to uh, show itself. This is why almost all of our definitions of freedom are negations. I'm free tomorrow means I don't have to work tomorrow. Uh, I have no class, therefore I am free. And one speaks of freedom always as a vacuum. Now, I'll come back to that in a moment. But this is what makes freedom so fascinating, the impossibility of predicting it. What makes freedom so fascinating uh, and so uh, tremendously important and also uh, so dangerous. Freedom, I believe, is the most loved word uh, in our uh, vocabulary. Freedom is the capacity of each person to develop to his or her full uh, potentialities. It's also the basis of our values. If someone says, for example, that he or she loves uh, us, uh, if he is not free uh, to say that, we do not value the love. 
because it's in, it probably is simply dependence or a conformity. Or take honesty. If someone, uh, well, like Benjamin Franklin said, honesty is the best policy. Well, if honesty is a good policy, it's not honesty at all. It's not an aspect of ethics or values. It's simply good business. The value of honesty lies when one can uh, make an honest uh, decision or statement even though it goes against his monetary uh, gain. Now, in our tradition, uh, with freedom as our most precious word and our most precious experience, there is, in the last few decades, a, 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 a very sharp paradox because freedom is very much mocked in our uh, society. It's as though when somebody talks about freedom, they're uh, trying, to, uh, 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 trying to put something over on us. Someone in a commencement address uses the word freedom. We yawn and look around to see uh, what he's trying to uh, fool us uh, with. Uh, the McCarthy episodes uh, back in the 1950s were examples of how a senator and other senators uh, tried to convince us that our liberty could be saved only if, we took, if they took our freedom away. And this use of freedom, hypocritical, uh, dastardly as it is, uh, is, the, uh, is, is, cent is central in the destruction of the meaning of this uh, much-loved uh, word. I came across a statement in a magazine a few days ago which said, like the good Germans, we in America continue to think we are free while the walls of dossiers, the machinery of repression, the weapons of political assassination pile up all around us. Where is the movement to restore our freedom? Who are the leaders that are prepared to insist that it won't happen here? And then we hear the haunting chorus of the last words in the movie Nashville. It don't worry me, it don't worry me. You may say that I ain't free, but it don't worry me. Is this to be the final epitaph of uh, American uh, freedom? Now I want to push deeper into the meaning of freedom in, uh, under four headings. The first is the freedom to be. The second, the freedom to create. The third, the freedom to love. And the fourth, <coughs> the freedom to confront death. Let me illustrate the first, the freedom of being, by the statements of a prisoner in San Quentin, whom Phil Zimbardo, a psychologist at uh, Stanford University, interviewed recently. This man was a Chicano. Uh, it's probably had a good deal to do with his being in San Quentin. He was also a poet. Uh, he could not take the pushing around uh, that goes on in San Quentin. So they put him in solitary confinement. And he'd been there for five years. Now what surprises me immediately is, how could a man keep sane for that uh, period of time? But he tells us in these words, uh, in San Quentin, they call solitary confinement with a strange kind of irony, maximum adjustment center. <clears throat> now what this uh, man said um, was as follows. They have separated me from my family. They have deprived me of touching my young boy. They have exchanged their concrete and steel for earth and flowers and everything warm and soft. They have left me with nothing, nothing except an inner core, a secret private place where they have not yet found out how to get to. 
Now this man is searching for this inner core. And then he goes on, this is where I think of who I am, where I try to understand the what and the why uh, of my enemies. Although sometimes I get depressed and feel like giving up, the discovery of myself and my thoughts gives me joy. For until they find a way to take my thoughts away, I am free. And then uh, he ends this with something that always blows my mind. A man can live without liberty, but he cannot live without freedom. And what he means is that one can live under such horrible conditions as San Quentin. One can live under a fascist government uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if it is inescapable, but he cannot live or she cannot live, no human being can live without this inner core uh, that uh, this uh, uh, prisoner is talking about. Now Bruno Bettelheim, who was a renowned psychologist for a number of years uh, down in Chicago, uh, tells about his own experience in the concentration camp in the last war under Hitler. Uh, and he says, in the concentration camp, we had no freedom of action at all. We could not influence what the SS troopers uh, uh, did uh, to us. But we had still, Bruno calls it, the ultimate freedom. And that was the freedom to choose our own attitude toward our, our persecutors. Now this goes, this is saying the same thing as the prisoner in San Quentin. It's very much, very much situation like this prisoner uh, in the concentration camp. But freedom consists of being, to start with. Freedom is an inner core by which I choose my attitudes toward the stormtroopers, regardless of the fact that they are my sworn enemies, or in spite of that fact, just as the prisoner in San Quentin uh, chooses his attitude uh, toward um, uh, the prison guards. Now, this freedom of being requires an awareness of one's own uh, being. And here I want to say a few words about the necessity of one's inner relationship. The necessity, I want to call it, uh, of the pause. And the pause is the time when the prisoner um, in San Quentin thinks about, as he says, his enemy and uh, himself. It's the pause when Bettelheim draws together his own attitudes uh, uh, in the concentration camp. And this pause is what is now coming into our country by way of Buddhism and the uh, religions of the East to remind us of something that we have forgotten in Christianity, namely meditation, uh, concentration, the openness, uh, the, the blankness that is the greatest fullness within ourselves, a state of nothingness, which as the Hindu philosophers through the ages have taught us is the state of greatest somethingness. The zero, incidentally, was invented by uh, these Hindu philosophers. And by this zero, the great power of mathematics in the modern day has developed. Now, what is a zero? Well, a zero is nothing. What is a minus zero? But, is it, but this nothingness is essential if we are to discover the somethingness of mathematics, uh, but more importantly, individually, the somethingness of uh, ourselves. The meditation that is our way of pausing, our way of reflecting, our way of, of letting in nothingness uh, with the expectation that there will come along with this some uh, new guidance of uh, great import. Swami Muktananda, who is a 
a guru out in uh, what is in the West and also in, in uh, India. And he says that the a Sanskrit uh, of breathing is ham sa, ham exhaling, sa inhaling. And in the gap between these two, God speaks to you. Now I would want to phrase that in the gap between these two, we get our insights, we get our sense of core that this prisoner was talking about. We get our inspirations, um, we get our uh, great thoughts. The significance of this pause uh, is that the rigid chain of cause and effect is then suspended. We no longer simply are responding uh, like uh, automatons to our conditioning. It's in this pause that comes our sense of our own core, our wonderings, our imaginings, uh, our ponderings. It's this, in this pause that uh, we reflect. Now, let us ask then how creativity comes out in uh, how freedom comes out in creativity. Creativity is the expression of one's freedom. In the pause there comes one's ideas uh, on the topic, incidentally, to which you are most committed in your active life. I don't want to leave the impression you simply go to Florida and lie on Miami Beach and there you'll get your ideas of genius. I mean that the ideas come to us when uh, on subjects that we have been slaving away hour after hour, and then we knock off the slaving. We meditate, we relax, and often in this pause there comes the uh, creative idea. I'm speaking of creativity not only in art and poetry and drama, but in business life, in diplomacy, in all activities uh, of um, human uh, existence. In order to be free to create, one must have the courage to be solitary, the freedom to turn loneliness into a creative solitude. I have made quite a study, uh, at least uh, I've studied it some time, uh, the lives of creative people, Michelangelo, Beethoven, uh, Mozart, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, um, and I have been impressed that each one of these persons uh, takes the moment of silence, the moment of pausing, uh, in order to be able to, the moment of um, simply looking, the moment of seeing, uh, as, as it, it's taught to us by the, the uh, uh, people from the, the Orient, the pausing to see takes this moment as the time when the idea will come out. This is why artists will stand back from their canvas and simply look. Uh, this is uh, uh, why um, so often the creative people are the people who have learned uh, to use solitude. The distinction between them and us well, I think we're all creative to some extent. The distinction between, uh, what I want to say is, when we have creative ideas as well, uh, this comes at the point when we can take our loneliness uh, that all of us feel to some extent and shift that into creative solitude. Shift that into the mood in which uh, between hamsa, the inspirations, the ideas uh, may uh, come to us. Now if we want also to ask <clears throat> what is the difference between ourselves or between uh, say the uh, ordinary person um, and uh, Michelangelo and Beethoven and so on, uh, what I find is the difference is that they have learned this uh, this trade through their own suffering. Um, 
the, uh, a study of creative persons was done down at Harvard by uh, Joseph Kagan, uh, ends up with the conclusion, such freedom is not born. He's talking about the freedom that goes into creation. Such freedom is not born. It is made in the pain of adolescent loneliness. It's made in isolate, the isolation of physical handicaps, or perhaps in the uh, s smug superiority of inherited title. Is what he is trying to say is the difficulties that we have to struggle with are precisely the way that we uh, develop the freedom to change our loneliness into a, a creative solitude uh, and then to use this solitude uh, for uh, our, uh, our creative uh, works. Picasso used to get up in the middle of a meal, uh, say there were important dinner guests there, at least important to his wife and family. He would get up in the middle of the meal and go into his studio. Uh, now, this is why creative people so often seem ruthless. Um, I once uh, invited to dinner at my place when I lived in New York, Mark Toby, who was uh, uh, very important modern artist from the, um, in the, uh, Seattle. Uh, and uh, Mark Toby, during the meal, would suddenly start to hum. Now, that's not what you do at a dinner, um, but it's what Mark Toby does. Um, now, the ruthlessness of creative people uh, is the, uh, the ruthlessness of great numbers of them that you can, you, know, you have experienced and perhaps yourself when you are most creative, comes out of the need to sift this loneliness, to, uh, to listen to this loneliness, to listen to the solitude even when you are in a great uh, crowd of people. Now the ordeals and the grief that drive the individual to uh, use his own creativity or her own creativity, and this applies to us all, uh, are uh, the sense of destiny uh, that is necessary if we are to use and appreciate our freedom. Freedom comes out of the way we use our destiny. Uh, and our destiny has meaning only because uh, we have uh, our freedom. As Beethoven used to say, I will grasp fate by the throat. This is what he said all through his life. Now here's a man who lived an exceedingly unhappy life. Stone deaf at 28, had his father an alcoholic, his mother died at 18, he had to take care of the family, never married, always longed for some uh, uh, woman uh, whom he might fall in love with, never got any of these rewards, if I may call them that. <coughs> now, <laughs> um, 